Today we're building this glossy noise visual. As you can see, it's a pretty small network and I've tried my best to make it super beginner friendly. If you've never used Touch Designer, I encourage you to try it. There's a really great free version and you can learn everything with it. So download that, follow this tutorial and you'll learn how to make this visual and even how to tweak it. And if you watch this video all the way to the end, we're gonna learn how to make it audio reactive. So you can plug in any song you like, maybe even plug something external like a guitar or a DJ set and make this visual respond to music. So if you open Touch Designer for the first time, it's gonna look like this. We're gonna right click and hold and drag over it and press delete to delete this. And we can click this button to close down the palette. We don't need that for now. Then press tab and search for a noise in the top world. So. Grab a noise, place it down. Now set the period to 23.88. Set the exponent to zero, turn monochrome off. Go to the transform tab and here we're gonna type abs time dot seconds divided by 15. Now you can see our noise will start to move. And now we need to change the resolution. If you don't have a paid version, that's fine. You can do seven, uh, 1280 by 720. If you have a paid version, do whatever you like. I'm going to do 920, 1080. Then feed in an edge. Set the sample step to 10. You can do this scrolling by pressing your middle mouse button. Uh, and moving up and down to select which increment you want and then sliding left to right to change these values. All right, now with the edge selected, press mm -hmm. Alt N or search for a null uh, and drag this all the way to the right. Click on the line and search for RGB key. This makes the black background black. Uh, click on display and now we can see our visual. Let's split our screen and here, select top viewer and right click here and deselect backdrop tops. And now we have a little preview screen of our visual. Now on this line, right click, insert operator, look for a null and make sure this is selected. Right click on the background and say collapse selected. Now call this feedback loop. And now we're going to create a feedback loop in here. Uh, you can delete this null drag this over uh, to grab a line from the in look for a feedback a transform a level and insert a composite uh, feed the level into the composite uh, select add now drag the composite onto the feedback and on the chop world Look for keyboard in, click viewer active, select the feedback and drag this onto the pulse of the feedback and say chop reference. Now every time we press one, our feedback loop gets reset. It. Now go to the level top and set the brightness to 0 0.97. Go to the transform and set the skill to 0 0.97. And now press U to go out of this feedback loop. Drag this a bit down and from the edge, uh, insert a displace. Now feed this feedback loop into the displace and set the displace weight to 0 0.019, 0 0.019. Uh, and now you can feed this into here. So make sure this is connected. And now we can see, yeah, we have our first weird lines. Now we can copy this feedback loop and disconnect it, drag it over here and insert this displace, insert it back here, go in here and drag this a bit to the right and insert a blur and set the filter size to one and the pre shrink, shrink to two and set the transform to one and the level to 0 0.99. Now go out. Now we're almost at the part where we're gonna give it some color. Uh, first insert a level and set the contrast to 1.4. Now insert a lookup, lookup, and look for a ramp and connect it to the second input of the lookup. And with this, you can change the colors. So if we were to add some green in this gradient, you can see that 
uh, the lookup um, basically basically takes it in its input and looks at the pixel value, so the brightness of its input, and then on this axis looks what color it should give it. So if the pixel is has a value of zero here, it will get it will be black, and zero point five it will be green, and one it will be white. So now our highlights are still white, and our shadows like our midtones are uh, green. I actually made a pretty cool tool for this. Uh, it's called Ramp Filler, and you can just drag it in like this and drag a ramp on top of it. And then we have some color theory stuff. So if I um, take uh, any color and let's see, we're gonna do blue and then hit pulse, it will give me the complementary color of this. Um, I think for the thumbnail, I used this color and uh, then a greenish color. And now I drag this a bit over and insert one more point and make this black. Um, this uh, tool is available on my Patreon on my six euro tier. Uh, I'd be really happy if you check it out. It supports me a lot. If you don't want to do that, you can just copy these values, but it's pretty cool to play with these color theories yourself and make your own stuff. Now from this feedback loop, drag a difference and insert the lookup into the second parameter of this difference. Uh, insert a displace top here and give this a value of 0 0.09, 0 0.09 and insert the difference into the displace. Now we need one last thing before we can make this audio reactive. So insert a lens distort here and give this a value of 0. 183 minus 0 0.183 and the second one minus 0 0.087. Now to make this visual audio reactive, we've got a lot of options. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is to change this animation, make it a bit more dynamic. So to do that, we're gonna look for the audio file in. If you wanna use external audio, uh, you can do, do an audio device in. You will need a sound card for this, but then you can plug anything into your sound card and your computer will, will receive it. You can just select uh, what you have here. Uh, I'm gonna delete this and do a device out so you can hear what we're doing. Uh, I'm gonna mute this because I've heard the touch designer song too often. Um, now from this, connect a spectrum. And now you can see this is our regular 20 to 20k hertz uh, spectrum. From this, uh, grab an analyze, make sure this is set to average. And now this gives us a value of the average volume of all these uh, single uh, channels. To this, connect a lag. Um, funny enough, this makes it smooth and not laggy. So uh, if we increase uh, the value, it will become uh, smoother, and I usually like 0 0.2. Then connect a math to this, and connect a speed to this. The speed shop is really cool because depending on the inputs, it changes um, how fast it's flowing up. So if we disconnect this and grab a constant chop, and feed this in here, it will do nothing. But if we increase this, it will slowly start to increase. And if we make this fast uh, higher, so it will um, increase faster. So we can use our analyzed audio to make this go up faster. So now if we drag this speed value onto the third parameter of the noise transform, um, and we unmute this, you can see that it will roughly uh, change speed uh, depending on the uh, audio. If we want to make this more extreme, we can uh, change the input range to something smaller. Uh, this requires a bit of tweaking. This project file will be up on my Patreon. Uh, it helps me a lot if you consider supporting because uh, due to my patrons, I can make more videos like this. Um, so thanks to all of my pa current patrons and hope to see you there. Uh, if anything was unclear, you can leave a comment and I will try my best to answer it. Uh, and see you next time.